Before I present this video for you, I have an audio clip for you. I refer in the video about searching Nelson's past talks for racism. Uh oh. Found it. So, I will present that first and then the video will start after. Think of eternal life. At the beginning of my message, I suggested with a smile that some of you might be hoping to find a prospect for marriage, perhaps in the not too distant future. May I offer a word of counsel in addition to that quotation from President McKay about keeping your eyes wide open? The commandment to love our neighbors without discrimination is certain, but it must not be misunderstood. It applies generally. Selection of a marriage partner, on the other hand, involves specific and not general criteria. After all, you can only be married to one individual. The probabilities of a successful marriage are known to be much greater if both the husband and wife are united in their religion, language, culture, and ethnic background. Thus, in choosing your eternal companion, please be wise. It's better not to fly in the face of constant headwinds. Occasional squalls provide challenge enough. Travis Wayne Goodsell, uh, Mormon Land, uh, did an article yesterday. Uh, if you don't know Mormon land, it's Mormons who are employed or used by the Salt Lake Tribune to do favorable stuff about the Mormon Church. As it's a group of people who do articles, opinion articles, about... Uh, modern topics about Mormonism and so yesterday's was uh, how can the church eliminate racism in the church how can the church eliminate racism <clears throat> and that shows the mental processes of those editors of uh, Mormon land and it has to do with Brad Wilcox obviously because Brad Wilcox exposed what everybody already knew but nobody was saying it out loud except me and others Exmo Lex I I think may have been the one who triggered this. Blame Exmo Lex. <laughs> she was doing uh, old uh, pamphlets or old documents that were racist. <clears throat> I remember her doing that series. And, uh, uh, and then all of a sudden Brad Wilcox, he, he Videos have come out of him before being racist, but now all of a sudden everybody's aware And I think that's Exmo Lex because she's popular among the young Mormons uh, Because she's sort of like the cool ex-Mormon who is uh, Still supportive of Mormonism in the church. It's just certain people Okay, but uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I suspect she's to blame. <laughs> Nonetheless, it shows the Mormon perspective that it's other Mormons who are setting the bad example for the church. 
as I did the September 6 uh, three hour video. It was very clear that everyone except for Paul didn't want to be ostracized, excommunicated, leave the church. You, know, you have Avraham who believed it was a mistake. What are you doing? How, how are you doing this to me? And I understand his point of view when I was uh, attacked by F. Michael Watson who ordered the state president to excommunicate me <laughs> and the, ex or the state president had his full uh, presidency and the full bishopric in my younger singles ward all gathered together to interrogate me I was like what the hell's going on I haven't gone against the church I'm supporting Joseph Smith as a translator and here I am being attacked they want me out of the church they think I'm a threat what's going on I don't understand and uh, and so yes I can understand his position <laughs> what you're attacking me for a, a human <laughs> divinic lineage <laughs> I don't understand and that's part of that that leads to what the problem is is that the prophets of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints don't tell us enough that we end up with all sorts of questions and so because the church won't give us the answers we then search for the answers and when you're not properly educated on how to search for truth you make errors and you come up with things that are different than other people and because other people are different than what you created you then say well you're wrong this is what I know to be truth and then we get the world joining in and and saying well we'll agree to disagree <laughs> truth is not an opinion you can't have a majority vote to determine what truth is or, or the even worse one feelings feelings are my truth my feelings must be validated dear God that one was a horrifying one that can't emerge because people get emotionally upset that people aren't accepting their feelings and it's usually uh, uh, it, it, it's horrifying And, uh, and so the, the picture at the beginning of this uh, video has uh, Heavenly Mother inserted in. <laughs> Somebody else had uh, taken Jesus coming from outer space in the clouds of heaven with the angels blowing their trumpets. It's in the Salt Lake Temple, or at least it used to be. Whether they put it back, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it was on the the wall to the right as you're facing the veil in the Salt Lake Temple and so those of you who've been inside and gone through and you know what I'm talking about and so somebody had put a picture of a woman and I think she's an actress but it's blurred and it looks like it could be a painting but nonetheless they put that over Jesus's head <coughs> and that uh, is how art has manipulated the teaching of people throughout history because an apple for the fall you've probably heard of that right you know you have movies about it bedazzled with uh, uh, Brennan Fraser and uh, what's her name she hasn't I don't think I've seen her do a movie for a long time, but regardless, I uh, yeah, I, but Apple is used in that movie, and the cover for the 
DVDs and the movie theater production shows her with an apple and serpents and stuff. <coughs> and, uh, and so that's where it came from was an artist who said, it's going to be an apple. He determined the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then you get scholars who come out and say, no, it was most likely a type of fig. <laughs> and again, it's all under the assumption that the story is literal history, rather than a theological story to help teach doctrinal principles for the religious followers. And so, as you see here, this is the pre-mortal council in heaven. And you can see how the artist has shaped the minds of Mormons. Because, is it just Heavenly Father and twelve of his sons in the pre-mortal council in heaven? No! And I even added Heavenly Mother to it. Because the artist didn't have Heavenly Mother has all of us children we're all gathered around father and there's three and because of our knowledge of Mormonism we know that it's Jesus Lucifer and Michael but no Heavenly Mother and all of us are involved in this council in heaven you know you can even see me <laughs> if you squint real hard but yeah, this is the artist with their view of Mormonism and the Council of Heaven. And I've heard Mormons use this painting to say what literally happened in the pre-mortal council in heaven. That everybody was involved and we all heard the debates from Heavenly Father over Zanet. This is the source. But it's not accurate, according to Joseph Smith. There were only Heavenly Father and 12 sons who participated, not even Heavenly Mother. And in the September 6th video, yeah, there was the one woman who pushed Heavenly Mother. Gotta get rid of her can't have Heavenly Mother. But again, by removing Heavenly Mother, Mormons then say, well, she's a sacred secret. We have to respect and keep her protected from people knowing about her. <laughs> really? <laughs> and so you can see how not only what is put into the paintings but what is not put into the paintings that affects Mormon's thought processes. And paintings are an easy way to not do research, <laughs> to not study and use the scientific study, not the, uh, here's what we want you to learn, memorize it. That's not study. That's indoctrination. <clears throat> you need to be able to learn that linguistically, Sidney Rigdon's linguistic pattern dominates the major portion of the Book of Mormon. And be able to figure out how it is that Joseph Smith Jr is claimed to be the translator of the Book of Mormon instead. If you don't know how to do research, you'll never find that answer out. And if you're Mormon, well, it's Joseph Smith. Science is wrong. Sidney Rigdon had nothing to do with it. Science is wrong. If you're ex-Mormon, you go, I don't know. Joseph Smith is a fraud. 
and and you never come to a knowledge of the truth because neither side knows how to do research properly and like I pointed out in September 6th neither did any of them because they're all Mormon educated by BYU which does not utilize science research properly it's the here's the information that we're allowing you to know and you must memorize it and that's that creates ignorant people drones who regurgitate the information <coughs> and produce like I said Mormons anti-science ex-Mormons fallacy thinking with the hasty generalization a hasty conclusion <clears throat> and so you can see hopefully how your view of the premortal council in heaven changes as I told you it's Heavenly Father and Twelve Sons versus everybody all gathered together with Heavenly Mother you can see how that now changes because instead of all of us you know watching the drama play between Heavenly Father and Jesus Michael and Lucifer it's now it was a sacred secret discussed among the leaders and then it was passed on to the rest of us you see how the difference is see with the painting version all of us got to hear firsthand the debates and we all heard Heavenly Father choose Jesus over Lucifer you see how agency in our premortal concept is different now because we all had the information through the whole time through the whole process of the debate and then we then chose Lucifer or Jesus which Heavenly Father approved Jesus versus none of us knew what the discussions was or were about it was just between them behind closed doors golden closed door plates <clears throat> and then they come out of that meeting and then teach us to try to get us to go to their side Heavenly Father not involved we don't know Heavenly Father's opinion did we even hearken daddy should I follow Jesus or Lucifer <laughs> mommy tell me which one to believe you know it creates a different thought process about the pre-mortal council in heaven <clears throat> and then you see that we as spirits had to figure it out for ourselves as to whether to believe Jesus or Lucifer we now had to exercise agency didn't we because of the painters thing oh well, it's I am going for Heavenly Father because he chose Jesus whereas the other actual scenario we don't know who do we choose we have to choose and so there are those who do the research there are those who are fence sitters and yes that word as bad overtones with the church prior to 1978 but it's wrong but yet the concept of a fence sitter is somebody who just does not say anything does not do anything and in so not doing not saying they are saying and they are doing 
you are making a choice not to make a choice. And in so doing, you are choosing a side. If it were a two situation. So, for example, uh, you witness a crime and you don't say anything, hey, stop it, leave that person alone. Or you don't do something like try to stop it, save the victim, or at least call the cops, or at least video the police putting their knee on. They did something. Even when it was authority committing the crime. But you have to do something. And if you don't do something, you are then guilty of the crime committed by the other person. Because you have confirmed to that person that you agree with what they're doing. That you approve of it. And also that they're cops, they have guns, they'll shoot you, so you're afraid of what they'll do to you if you say something, if you do something to stop them. And in that particular case, you're a victim. But when your life is not threatened, and you choose to do nothing, you then become guilty as well. And so with Brad Wilcox, if you chose not to say something, not to do something, you become guilty of approving of what Brad Wilcox did and said. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the prophets, went silent. Remember? They haven't come out with a statement. They haven't said anything about Brad Wilcox specifically. And in so doing, they support Brad Wilcox. And that is perceived by members, as Fox 13 News Utah covered last night, and I did the 29-second video, two Mormon youth at a high school women's basketball game emulated Brad Wilcox because the presidents of the church, the prophets, approve of Brad Wilcox by being silent. And this is what Mormon land is purposely deceiving their audience. How does the church eliminate racism? Well, the president of the church needs to speak out against Brad Wilcox. He needs to restore the damage Take it upon him respond first hand and he's old enough to have been guilty of being racist because I'm pretty damn sure if we go back far enough we'll find something in Nelson's past what do you want to bet And we all know Oaks. Yeah, he, he, yeah. I've done the videos where he has supported racism and bigotry and sexism and neglecting of the poor. Yeah, Oaks is very open about how he's a hater. And so Mormons see that and follow his example. Follow the prophets, follow the prophets, follow the prophets, commit crimes too. Hate all your neighbors, call it love. So that's what happens when leaders set the bad example, even when they're silent. Mormons perceive that as approval. And I told you in advance, the prophets are going to go silent. Watch. The prophets.
prophets are not going to do anything to Brad. Watch. So, and uh, even with just one heavenly mother that already has Mormons on the defensive, because all Mormons know that Heavenly Father had polygamous wives. And so which polygamous wife did you come from? Were you the first wife, child in heaven? Or were you number 57? <laughs> you see how your perception changes when people present things to you. This is nonverbal communication. The word in nonverbal communication. And how you believe determines the consequences that you will experience in your life. And so the prophets being silent about Brad Wilcox resulted in the two high school punks who thought it would be cool and appropriate to be racist at a high school women's uh, basketball game. It's that simple. Those two boys believe that the prophets are true, speak for Jesus, and that it's Jesus' plan of happiness to be racist. Now do you see why it's important for not only the theology to be accurate in teaching a message, not literally history and literally true, <clears throat> but that the prophets make sure that the Mormons are very clear on this as to where they stand on that issue. Because the premortal council in heaven for Mormons is about who do we follow? Heavenly Father's plan carried out by Jesus or Lucifer's plan? And we all know Heavenly Father's is love and Lucifer's is hate. But when you don't perceive the information correctly, you twist it around. Oh, hating is love. Love is hate. Oh, you're trying to save my life? You're taking away my agency. That's Lucifer's plan of happiness. And we've seen that example in the news as well. That is still continuing and going on to year three. And so, wouldn't you know it, out of all the video, or out of all the views that I had for that uh, uh, Prophets in Sight Hate video, that was only 29 seconds, it was, last I checked, a complete shutout of thumbs down. Because Mormons perceive Jesus as allowing hate. And it's not perceived as hate. Crime is not a crime. Truth isn't true. Reality isn't real. Hate isn't hate. All because those in charge drop the ball. Maliciously drop the ball. They know what they have to do as leaders of the church, and they chose not to do it. 